Here we have example five, which is a second of our examples when we're working with partial fractions with a repeated linear factor. In, ex in example four, the denominator just had one linear factor, which was squared. This time, as you can see, our denominator is actually a product of two distinct factors, one of which is repeated. It's actually a little bit of a combination of type 1 and type 2. So we'll see how that works out here. But we start off as normal by writing out our rational function. Like that. Now, how are we going to set up our template? Well, as we did with distinct linear factors, if there is a separate factor, a distinct factor, we know that that's going to be one of our denominators. So the x minus 2, we can just stick in there as a partial fraction in its own right. And then we get to the x minus 1 term. And because it's repeated, what we found in the last example was we have to start to create uh, different partial fractions with the an increasing power of that until you get to the one that you started with, which in this case was 2. So I've got two separate fractions, one with a denominator of x minus 1 and a second one with x minus 1 all squared. Still, as in type 1, my numerators are going to be constant terms. So having done that, I now have the template of what my solution is going to look like. I just need to then find the correct values for A, B and C. We do that by multiplying by the denominator, of course, as we have done in the past. So we want to multiply everything on both sides by x minus 2 multiplied by x minus 1 all squared. So on the left-hand side, as usual, that cancels out, and we're left with the numerator, 3x squared minus 11x plus 5. On the right-hand side, let's have a look at what it does. My first fraction, a divided by x minus 2. The x minus 2 cancels with the x minus 2 in this uh, expression here. So I'm left with a multiplied by x minus 1 all squared. If I consider multiplying the second fraction by x minus 2 times x minus 1 all squared, you'll see that the x minus 1 on the denominator cancels with one of the x minus 1s in that expression, which means that my b terms multiplied by x minus 2 and x minus 1 just to the power of 1. We've effectively got rid of that square term. If you look at the third one, what's going to happen there? The x minus 1 squared cancels completely with the x minus 1 squared term there. And that leaves us with c times x minus 2. Okay. If it helps to write out these multiplications, then do so. If you can do it in your head, as a mental process, and that's okay too. So here we have the second stage complete. We have worked out um, an equation such that there's no fractions left. And what we do now is third stage, which is we choose some values for x, which is going to help us simplify this equation. Right, starting from our first factor, x minus 1, we could imagine that if x was 1, then that bracket is going to end up as being the value 0, so the a term would disappear, and perhaps another term. So let's choose for x to be 1 on the left-hand side. That gives us 3 times 1 squared minus 11 times 1 plus 5. And on the right-hand side, we have 0. We know that whole term is going to be 0. And also, because we have an x minus 1 term here, we know that's going to 0 as well. There's not an x minus 1 term in our third expression here, so we can say that that would be uh, 1 minus 2. Okay. 
take your time when multiplying the left or simplifying the left hand side plenty of places to make mistakes especially when you're substituting in negative values 3 times 1 squared is 3 minus 11 times 1 is 11 plus 5 is equal to negative c 3 subtract 11 is negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3 is equal to negative c multiplied by negative 1 or something like that and you end up with c is equal to 3 so we have a first value for the constant term c is 3 we have one other factor that we can we can use to help us simplify it when x is 2 change the color of that oops when x is 2 then we know that the those values here and this one over here multiplying the c are both going to go to 0 so I'll write that down when x is equal to 2 we can substitute 2 in instead so we've got 3 lots of 2 squared minus 11 lots of 2 plus 5 uh, what's going to happen here? Well, we don't have an x minus 2 term with multiplying the a, so that's going to still exist. So we get a multiplied by 2 minus 1 squared, but we know that we have an x minus 2 term in the other two. They're both going to go to 0. So that I can simplify the equation in this way. 3 times 2 squared, that's 3 times 4, which is 12 minus 22 plus 5 and we've got 2 minus 1 squared is 1 so that's going to be a straight away 12 subtract 22 is negative 10 add 5 is negative 5 no further calculation required so having a look at our equation back up here we can see that there's no other value for x we can choose which makes one of the, the letter terms disappear which means we're back to the situation where we can just choose some arbitrary value for x we'll end up with an equation that does contain a and b and c terms they're not they're, they're not going to disappear but what we can do is substitute our known values for a and c you can pick any value for x that you want, but keep it uh, simple. And I can default value is usually x equals 0. In that case, we end up on the left-hand side with 3 lots of 0 squared minus 11 lots of 0 plus 5. Uh, our a term becomes... 0 minus 1 all squared plus b multiplied by 0 minus 2 and 0 minus 1 plus c lots of 0 minus 2 squared. Is that right? No, just 0 minus 2, not all squared. So let's simplify all of that. On the left-hand side, we just have 5. Uh, our a term here becomes negative 1 squared is positive 1. So it just becomes a. Our b term, we've got negative 2 multiplied by negative 1. Negative 2 multiplied by negative 1 is positive 2. So it becomes plus 2b. And then we've got negative 2c. So we end up with that little equation. There we can substitute in c is 3 and a is negative 5. Which gives us... Well, if I able to simplify that. So we add 11 to both sides, then we're going to get 16 is equal to 2b 
which means that B has the value of 8. So we've got our three values. I'll write them down at the side. We've found that A is equal to negative 5. We've found that B is equal to 8. And we've found that C has a value of 3. Therefore, our original expression, which was 3 x squared minus 11x plus 5 all over x minus 2 times x minus 1 all squared can be written as 3 fractions 1 with negative 2 1 with x minus 1 and x minus 1 squared in order we've got a b and c so we've got a negative um, 5 here which Rather than putting it up top with the 5, write it at the beginning here. Negative 5 over x minus 2. B is positive, plus 8. C is positive, plus 3 over x minus 1, all squared. Sometimes you might want to rearrange that so that the negative fraction is not at the beginning, which is fine, but it's, uh, there's no problem with being like that. Okay, so that's our second example for the type 2 partial fraction. So you could practice a few more of them and then we'll be going on to have a look at the third type, which is what happens when we can't actually factorise all or part of our denominator, what happens when it's an irreducible um, quadratic factor. And we'll have a look at that in example 6 and 7.